It's locked, all right. as they are ineffective. But they do contain iron tartrate, and that might prove itself useful. <laughs> Behavior is similar to the infected William Bishop. Must be the same strain. The sickness moves faster than influenza. It's locked. surely grant me access to the basement. from corpses and the husks of animals. They're not after blood. Mr. Connor's injuries don't match the report. I'd better look into this. Multiple abrasions and scarring on the arms and legs. Old and distinctive injuries of a sailor or a fisherman. Traces of a pinkish foam at the corner of the lips. Some sort of drug overdose, perhaps? The chest was originally open to perform the operation, 
The sutures are clean, but the chest has been reopened. A puncture over the left lung, possibly a chest tube insertion. Not the cleanest work, but I think it was successful. Signs of internal bleeding. So, Dr. Tippett's anesthetics were incorrectly dosed, causing the patient's death. And then he tried to operate on him again. Tippett has made an egregious error. It's time we talked. I'm not sure I can defeat them without becoming stronger. Oh, to drink blood is so tempting. Sodium hypochlorite. Dangerous to administer, but efficient in the proper dosage.
get back, Oliver. Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. How are things here? Not good, to say the least. We're struggling against an invisible enemy, more lethal than any bullet from a gun. It's hard, Doctor. An invisible enemy? Quite a poetic term for a disease, especially from a nurse. Sorry, Doctor. These last few weeks have been exhausting. We could all do with a good night's sleep. Do you think this hospital can survive the epidemic? We are all volunteers here. And we're trying to hold fast, but how do we beat an invisible killer? Some nurses have already resigned. I'm not familiar with all the staff yet. Perhaps you could help me. Brilliant professionals, most of them. Dr. Swansea has a gift for recruiting talent. Most of them? Is there a problem I should know about, nurse? It would be inappropriate for me to speak ill of a colleague. Nurse Brannigan, if you do know something, please tell me. Anything you say will be held in confidence. No. I may disagree with some conduct, but in the end, everybody is doing their best. Is there anyone that stands out? Well, I have never met someone as dedicated as Dr. Tippett's. He should be a standard for us all here. If only he were younger. Why should his age be a problem? I guess it's fair to say he's always pushing himself to the limits. He just doesn't know when to stop and get some rest. Tell me what Dr. Tippett's did. I know his mistake caused a patient's death. If I had not covered up his error, Dr. Tippett's would have been fired from this hospital. I could not let that happen. You can't allow your emotion to dictate your conduct concerning patients, Nurse Brannigan. Look around you, Dr. Reed. Do you really think we can afford to lose a brilliant practitioner like Dr. Tippett's in our situation? I can't say I approve of what you did. But as a field surgeon, I know that some situations require you to bend the rules. I'm not proud of what I've done, but to contain the epidemic must be our priority, so we can't afford to lose Dr. Tippett's. Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. Good evening, Dr. Tippett's. Dr. Reed, any good news to share? What is the Pembroke Hospital situation? And please, speak freely. This hospital is not exactly the best of London. I'm sure you are used to working in a better environment. It's more than enough. In any case, the personnel of a hospital are much more important to me than the building. Don't be misled by appearances, Dr. Reed. This hospital does not lack talented people. It just lacks hope. What can you tell me about the staff in the hospital? Some are really good, and others are not so good. But during this troubled period, there is no time for slander. I prefer to focus on the positive character traits. Tell me more about cherished people, then. Nurse Brannigan is a pearl. She is the most helpful and dedicated nurse I've ever worked with. A clever and cheerful woman. You really seem to admire her skills. I'll go even further. If she was a man, she would be a damn fine practitioner. Any opinion about the management? I don't always agree with Dr. Swansea's reserve, but I must admit he does all he can to keep this facility running during this crisis. Ah yes, the burden of command. I was fed up with this concept while serving as a medical officer. Don't get me wrong, Swansea's a good administrator. I just wish he would get out of his office down again. You're exhausting yourself, Corcoran. Maybe you should think about preserving your strength. No. We must keep on healing all those poor souls. We are the last rampart before chaos. 
once more unto the breach. Your attitude is irresponsible, Doctor. Believe me, I've seen so many medical errors caused by exhaustion during the war. You're right. This is a war, Dr. Reed, and I don't intend to surrender. Kokoran, I want you to tell me about Mr. Connor. How did he die? What happened? He was my patient. He died because of my mistake. That's the blunt truth. What was the nature of the mistake? It was a twofold error. My diagnosis was wrong, and the administered dosage was too strong. Who was this patient? I don't know. Some sick man from the docks. Maybe a fisherman. I had no time to talk with him. No one claimed a body. Why not stop practicing? Are you mad? I killed that man, I admit it, and it won't happen again. I have saved so many lives since then. I will cover for you, Dr. Tippetts, by keeping what happened to Mr. Connor to myself. I... I don't know what to say, actually. I can't exactly force you to become my accomplice. You didn't force me. This is my decision to make. I believe you're still of use to the hospital, considering the situation. Then I can make you this promise. As soon as the epidemic is eradicated, I will resign. What will you do after your resignation? Do you have a plan? I always fancied visiting Cyprus. Such a beautiful island. I could buy a house there, by the sea. Read poetry and wait for death. Goodbye, Dr. Tippetts. Can I be sure I'll not find your unconscious body in the house again? I promise you, you'll not find my unconscious body. For God's sake, how can you say such a thing? How can you refuse to listen? I tried to warn you for so long. No, I won't let my only son die. You promised me you'll stay alive. Your son lied to you, like the whole world lies to us. Damn it! Why is this so difficult every time?
That is better. That is better. I will make it through one more night. Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. Why does Dr. Tippett claim you're the main reason he keeps working, despite his fatigue? If it wasn't for him, I probably would have left the Pembroke years ago. Dr. Tippett does not think of you as just a nurse anymore, does he? If you're suggesting he's not taking my gender into consideration when it comes to medical practice and knowledge, I really hope he doesn't. Tell me, nurse, did you know Dr. Tippett was addicted to medication? I suspected this behavior for some time, but never dared to ask him about it. Until the day he confessed to me. Why would he confess to you about his addiction, Nurse Brannigan? Don't you know you doctors can't hide anything from a nurse? We're always there, even if you don't notice us. Do you consider yourselves our confessors, Nurse Brannigan? I wouldn't dare, Dr. Reed, but I'm intrigued. How did you discover Dr. Tippett's secret? What can I say? I seem to have a knack for discovering secrets. And for hiding them as well. Do you approve of his addiction? Of course I don't approve. But I understand he needs it to fight the exhaustion. Let's hope he'll stop injecting himself once the epidemic is over. And what if he doesn't? Then we'll have to convince him to stop. I believe he's still in control of his addiction, for now. But we must remain vigilant. Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. Good evening, Dr. Tippett. Dr. Reed, any good news to share? I know you're taking drugs, Corcoran. Why take such a risk? I need it to endure the long shifts. We have no idea how long the epidemic will last. We can't let it win. I understand the gesture, Doctor. An immediate answer to an emergency situation. But this can't be a long-term solution. Thank you for your understanding, my dear colleague. And be assured, I have total control of my consumption. Goodbye, Dr. Tippett. Finally, you've returned, Doctor. Did you find anything of value? Yes, Nurse. You've worked your first miracle, Doctor. Now, this patient here needs immediate treatment. Duty calls? When the storm has passed, I'll show you how to mix the remedy yourself with the same basic ingredients. Many thanks, Doctor. When you've finished, you ought to report to Dr. Swansea in his office. He's been looking for you. Seemed pressing. Dr. Reed, may I help you? 
What can you tell me about the epidemic, Nurse Crane? I've been out of touch since I've come back to England. Everyday folk don't know how bad it is. The papers certainly won't tell them. Not as long as the war is raging on, anyway. News on the front stated that the Spanish flu was under control, at least in Britain. It seemed to be for a while, but that was only last summer. It returned with a vengeance just over a month ago. What can you tell me about our patients here at Pembroke? This hospital was founded to help the East End poor and needy. But since the war and the quarantine, we've had all manner of folk. Can you be more specific? Well, veterans, the elderly, dock workers. We even have a few mental patients. If there's space, we take them. For how long have you been working here, Nurse Crane? I first volunteered at the Pembroke in 1911, a few months after Dr. Swansea was appointed. And before you arrived here? If you must know, this was my first job. Well, Dr. Swansea certainly has confidence in your abilities. Are you in charge of the nursing staff? Not in an official capacity, but the Pembroke doesn't always work above board, so to speak. How is the duty roster organized? Everybody works until they can't. If there's time, they'll eat a meal and shed a silent tear. What about medical protocols? Dr. Reed, we don't have the money and resources here at the Pembroke like they do in the West End. We do what we can. I'll see you later, Nurse Crane. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. Do you need any help? I'm afraid I may, sir. I don't mean to be a burden. You are not a burden, sir. Healing you is my responsibility. And you have my gratitude for that. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. I'm all right. Don't waste your time with me. You don't mind if I search your pockets, do you, sir? You won't need any of these anyway. I'm not stealing from you, mister. I'm only redistributing your belongings to people who need them more than you. You see, no one has claimed your body, sir. So it would be such a shame to bury you with your value. I will not forget you, sir, and I thank you for your generous donation. <laughs> 